Hi everyone, Happy New Year. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2021 Bowman Draft Baseball Jumbo Edition. Eight box Jumbo Edition. Pick your team number five. Remember, six sold out after five or before five. So if you're looking for six, that's in last night's video on Monday. Today is Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. And we've got some break credit we're giving away as well. So if you got at least two teams, and you've got a chance. And um, yeah, I, if you win a team, that counts too. So if you've got a little rooftop next to your name, that means you won a team. And if that counts as your second team, that does count. So thanks everyone for getting in. Appreciate it. Jeremy L. ended up with Last Spot Mojo with the Cleveland Guardians before he pulled teams out for the filler. So thanks everyone for making this happen. Anyone here in this break watching live right now with me? All right, here we go. Good luck, everybody. Wow, yeah, Redmond's here with the with the team that he won. Your Cubs. There you go. Good luck. Rex is asking if I could switch bodies with one person on the planet for one day, who would it be, and what would I do? It would obviously be Usain Bolt, and I would run. hydrate the vocal cords here because I think it would just be amazing to be able to run that fast and, and so effortlessly. That'd be incredible. You know, like I probably run a, like a, a 10 5 40. So to be able to run as fast as, you know, to be able to run as fast as Usain Bolt, that would be incredible. Just, just to experience that feeling, that exhilaration. All right. Here we go. Now for the pick your teams, we we stated in the description the that paper base won't ship except for these three players right here. Marcelo Meyer for the Boston Red Sox, Colton Kowser for the Baltimore Orioles, and your number one overall pick, Henry Davis for the Pittsburgh Pirates. We got Tyler McDonough, purple paper, to 250. That'll be for EA and the Red Sox. And we've got uh, Ryke Elvin DeCastro, purple chrome to 250 for the Blue Jays, EA with the Bluebirds. And we got Hunter Goodman for the Purple Mountains Majesty. That'll be for Daniel and the Colorado Rockies. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not going to be sleeving all of those cards, but we're going to put them in a different stack so our sorting and shipping team will be able to, to take care of that. We've got another 
a jumbo case to do directly after this. So we're already a little bit on the later side of our evening, so we want to get to that one. As, uh, as quickly as possible. And all those Hunter or Henry Davis uh, paper will go to Mark Bissett and the Pirates. We've got Austin Love, orange paper, 24 at 25 for the STL. That is going to go to Jeremy. And we got Harry Ford, not Henry Ford, Harry Ford, the Invicta cards, which can be numbered as well. Can they be autographed? Maybe. Got the Kings at Lakers on in the background. The Lakers taking a 43 to 38 lead after a little slow start in the first quarter. And we got a blue wave, Ben Casparius. 137 out of 150. Rex, it upsets you they left out Wicks, Lighter, and Tir Torontos for the Cubs. It shouldn't upset you because that's traditionally what they do every year. You know, there'll be there'll be a section of players that'll be in draft, and then there'll be a section of players that will be in that will be in the uh, the next Bowman release. No surprises there, or shouldn't be anyway. Now we saw our first Super Fractor the other day, Adley Rushman, but we have not seen a Super Fractor autograph. If we can get a big name Super Fractor autograph, that would be pretty cool. Uh, that Dodgers Blue Wave autograph goes to Martin, who won that spot in the filler. And Jordan McCants is your third autograph of the box. So you think the 2021 draft was being 2021? Well, no. I mean, obviously, Rex, you've been you've been doing this long enough to know that the second round pick, the second overall pick, always is is in the next Bowman product, Bowman baseball product. You do that. We've been doing that for years. And the number one overall pick. And some of the other top picks are in Bowman Draft. There's Chase Petty, Speckle. Sparkle, Speckle. We got an orange Francisco Alvarez, seven out of twenty-five for the Mets. That will be for Karen and the Mets. All right, first box in the books. Yeah, I do a I do a recap, so you'll you should be able to see it in the previous break. I think it was pick your team four, whatever I did last night. And I'll do an autograph recap at the end of this as well. Next box. All 
Honestly, I don't remember if if Wix was was a first rounder. Yeah, I do actually do have the draft class open. Nice, Spectra is down to four. That'll be a great break to add tomorrow. And so let's fill that up and add it to the schedule. the draft class it's Henry Davis was one Jack Leiter two it's Al Leiter's son I believe Jackson Job three Marcelo Meyer four Colton Cowser five and oh there's Jordan Wicks out of Kansas State 21st overall Onwards. Matos, blue chrome to 150 for the Giants. That's going to be for Arthur King. And there's Tanner Allen, 129 out of 250, purple chrome auto for the Fish. That's for Martin and the Marlins. Colton Kowser for the O's. That all goes to Chad Prince. A Harry Ford in Victa. It's a cool insert that they added. And a Bryce Miller autograph for the Mariners. EA with the M's. Nice fourth round pick. Jordan Groshans, blue paper to 150 for the Blue Jays, EA for the Jays.
Next little stack. They're Marcella Meyer for Boston and EA. CJ Abrams. And we've got a green autograph, Calvin Ziegler. 18 out of 99 for the New York Mets. That's going to go to Karen P. There you go, second round pick. Always good to get some color with those autographs. Another Colton Kowser for Baltimore. And Brett Beatty to four ninety nine for the Mets. Maximo Acosta, green to 99 for the Rangers. That'll be for Karen. All right, another box done. Some of the the big rookie names that we're looking for this upcoming season. Hopefully, we don't lose too much of the uh, of the regular season with the lockout and everything. I think Bobby Wood Jr. should be a rookie, right? I think he'll probably, barring any setback, I feel like he should be playing day one. I think Joey Bart rookie cards were last year. Adley Rushman, maybe his rookie cards might be this year. He should be, he should be probably starting from day one. Same with Bobby Witt Jr. Especially if they hammer out those uh, those service time playing service time issues. Um, in a collective bargaining agreement. And in fact, hopefully owners and you know the players union are talking now. Because I remember they said before Christmas, I think they said, yeah, there was there were some little talks I want to say, but I think significant talks won't start happening until until the new year. And now well we're we're in our first full business week of the new year. So hopefully they're they're on top of that so we don't lose too much baseball. You get the last bits of, uh, I think there's still a few big free agent names still sitting around as well, so that's got to get taken care of. All right, next box. Brennan Davis, Speckle. Is Brennan Davis going to get called up this year? Is he going to be a rookie? There's Andy Rodriguez, the 79, green speckle for the Pirates. Mark Bissett with the Buccos. And then our autograph is Christian Encarnacion Strand. Twins, That's that'll be for Daniel Becker in Minnesota.
We've got a JT Schwartz, purple paper, 204 out of 250 for the Mets. Another Henry Davis paper. Jay Allen Invicta. There's an Angel Martinez. It's a four ninety nine for Cleveland. That'll be for Jeremy. And then here's a ta Tannen Allen. Tanner Allen. 104 out of 499. Tannen? Like Biff Tannen? No, Tanner Allen. Miami Marlins. Martin with Miami. Marlins. Good alliteration there. Before the end of the season, they were saying Brandon will most likely be June of 2022. All right, so hopefully they'll get some rookie cards of his in into next year's sets. Real time saying, I can't help but think service time manipulation can only go so far when you have a father who pitched in the majors as well versed in terms negotiable like Bobby Witt. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't, it's not really his, I mean, if, if it all stays the same, it's not really his choice though. There's really no negotiating you can do. If they say, we don't want to call you up until after a month into the season, as the current rules stand, then you don't get called up. But I feel like that's something they're they're gonna try to change in the collective bargaining room. That's probably has to be has to be one of the bigger bigger issues on the table, especially after the whole drama between oh, knocking the camera and drama between Chris Bryant and uh, and the Cubs organization. There's Nick York to 199 for Boston. Were Wander Franco rookie cards last year or are they coming up this year? Kind of blanking on that. And we've got another Tanner, but this time Tyler Beebe. That is for Jeremy and the Cleveland Guardians. Last spot mojo strikes again. Cleveland, this is for you. Two Tanner autographs. You got a Jaden Hill, purple chrome to 250. Eric Pena and some paper. All right, next box.
Okay, uh, real time saying, okay, I, I guess my assumption of the service time manipulation was about what, what a team claimed a player is being paid is doubted. That they'll transition with the same success. So they have 600,000 for five years. Uh, I'm not quite sure I'm understanding what you're saying. I think that... Uh, I think it's really not necessarily doubting what a player is being paid or success. I think they think that if, like, for example, that's why you see it happen with Chris Bryant and Bobby Wood Jr. Like, if they think it's a good player, they don't want to call him up too early because then they could hit free agency a season earlier. So they've... so. Owners have been able, GMs have been able to kind of game the system where if it's like, oh, they figured out, oh, if I don't call up this player until like a month and a half into the season, then the, the way the service time days are set, they won't hit free agency until the following season, like another season after that. So they're they're essentially able to get another season of control of a younger player of a young upcoming star. That's where that usually comes into play. I don't I don't know what the exact days and stuff are, but but I think that's the general thing. Oh, nice yellow lava seven out of seventy five. Adrian Del Castillo for the Diamondbacks. That's for Mark, and we got Ryan Webb to four ninety nine refractor autograph for Cleveland. I think the Bucks have released Antonio Brown, Chris. That means they already have a contract. Well, they're on their they're on the arbitration contracts. Not even arbitration. I think Bobby Witt Jr. may be just paid like whatever the whatever the minimum is for that, which is maybe five hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Only only in arbitration will you start start seeing, you know, then they'll have like th up to maybe four arbitration years where they're see still under team control, and then at that point, that's when they can sign whatever contract they can you know, in free agency. So by that point, you know, Bobby Wood Jr., for example, may already be like five or six years into his career. You know, possibly winning MVPs, putting up monster numbers, but, you know, not being paid commensurate to other players of his, of his caliber. So the team's essentially getting a deal for a number of years, which is something that that players have not really liked how many years of team control they have. Another Ryan Webb. This time just a base autograph for Jeremy. Cleveland, this is for you. Yeah, Martin, you got the, you got the, you bought the uh, Marty, you bought the Marlin straight up. That was a good call, good pick. There's Gunnar Henderson to 199 for the Orioles. That'll be for Chad. Another Marcelo Meyer for Boston. Got a Henry Davis as well for the Pirates.
next stack. Jackson Joe to four ninety nine for the Tigers. That'll be for Chad. And this is this cool looking card here. Gold Wave autograph. Thirty out of fifty. Ryan Spikes. That's for Anthony in the Tampa Bay Rays. It's a sharp looking card. And that's our third autograph of this box. Let's see if we can find some other parallels. Pedro Pineda, nice. Aqua, Lava to 199 for the A's. That'll be for Daniel, Daniel Becker. All right, we are halfway through this break, boys and girls. Another four boxes to go. Good luck. Hopefully the lockout won't be too long. I don't want to miss too many too much regular season baseball. I think last last I looked looked this up, they were trying the major league baseball and the owners were trying to trying to create some sort of wacky wild card system in an attempt to expand the playoffs, which I didn't like. So hopefully hopefully that'll they'll be able to not do that. Now I know that the expansion of the playoffs will probably be um, will probably be uh, will probably sorry I lost my train of thought here there's Maximo Acosta oh I, I figured the playoffs will probably be expanded but but the way they were doing where you could like pick your opponents and stuff like that I think that was that's a little too too goofy for me isn't it Really shouldn't have to fiddle with with it too much. There's Pedro Leon, purple, a purple green speckle to 99, and a nice Colton Kowser, Bowman first autograph. That'll be for Chad Prince and the Orioles. That is your fifth overall pick out of uh, Sam Houston State. Nice.
We got a Matthew Nelson to 499. All right. Now, yeah, I mean, I think you're right, Rex. I think there's got there's inevitably going to be. I mean, unless they figure out in the next two weeks, but I think there may be at least some some interruptions in spring training. So we'll see. Yeah, real time. Yeah, for for bonus babies like Bobby Wood Jr., who got like probably got big bonuses. I don't think they're really. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's not, he's not going to be really hurting for money early on in his season. But the service time stuff really affects players like I don't know that that maybe weren't, maybe didn't get the big bonuses. There's Lonnie White Jr., 27 out of 150. Alec Thomas to 199 for Mark and the Snakes. Some of the bigger names will always will always get those nice bonuses, but there there's a lot of players that you know if you're like a second round pick or something like that, that bonus drops um, that bonus amount drops significantly. They don't get paid too much while they're in the minors on minor league deals. And when they get called up, usually the major league deal isn't that much more significant. What's the big hits in this? Well, honestly, I mean, it could be anybody, right? This is Bowman Draft, so there's Shailen Polanco, blue paper to 150. So you never know, like, which one of these players can turn out to be a high-value superstar. So there's a ton of long-term value in this. So, But I think currently there are a few players, obviously the top picks, like Henry Davis, number one overall pick you know, are going to be the more immediate chases. But, you know, Bowman's unique in that that even if it's not those high draft picks, you know, if Frank Mazzucato for the Kansas City Royals, you know, ends up blossoming into a stud, this could be, you know, seventh overall pick, but still. Never know, it could be this guy. Royals, that'll be for Cody Kennedy, who won a spot in the filler itself. And then won the Royals, got an autograph of a top 10 pick. And then obviously anything low numbered, you know, you want to see in this stuff as well, especially for big card heavy products like this. Is Gunnar Henderson, purple chrome to 250. All right, onwards. And like I said, I'll do an autograph recap at the end of this.
Do I know who the comedian Titus, Christopher Titus is? No, I don't. That name sounds familiar. <laughs> probably, knowing Rex, it's probably someone from the 90s. And maybe had a stint on SNL. Or had a, maybe had a, a short run but critically acclaimed TV show. Sorry, Jacob Steinmetz, 22 out of 71, speckle for Mark Bissett and the Diamondbacks. Third round pick. I think he's been getting a lot of attention because he aims to become the first Orthodox Jew to reach the majors, which would be pretty cool. Of course he started in the 90s, Rex. Yeah. I don't think you'd reference anybody that wasn't from the 90s. And he probably has some new thing going on that, which triggers your, your 90s nostalgia. 15 out of 25, right? Kelvin DeCastro, orange chrome for EA and the Blue Jays. Oh, he's doing he's doing a stand-up tour. I see. Nice. Let me know how that goes. Maybe Rex, you'll be, you'll be, uh, you'll, you'll witness him. I don't know. It's always, I always, I always wonder what it would be like to be part of like a viral event. There's Victor Mesa Jr. Not, not like in, not viral as in COVID, but like a vi viral as in like a meme worthy event, something like that. What if you were involved with like this Christopher Titus guy? saying something like super controversial and you'll be like, yeah, I was at that show. You know, can you imagine like um, being at, I don't know, what would a, <laughs> when, uh, when Michael Richards, Kramer from Seinfeld, can you imagine being at that comedy club that night when he was dropping N-bombs? There's Jordan at VR's for Philadelphia. That'll be for Mark Bissett. I mean, terrible moment slash great story worthy moment. It's like, remember that when that happened? I was there. I was at that comedy club that night. From my understanding from what happened back then is that I think it was just a random night. I don't know if it was like a, just a small comedy club in LA, I think. And it wasn't really anything... Where, where there were a lot of comics just was trying out materials or something like that. So Rex, maybe you'll be you'll be witness to something like that. You know, and you can put in a report to like TMZ. TMZ live from Fort Wayne. 90s comic Chris Titus Christopher Titus goes bananas and unloads on a uh, on a member of the crowd Rex was there and he gives us the report yeah he just started going off on this guy <laughs> I don't know what would what would be what can I say that's offensive but but not not that offensive? Like he was making fun of homeless people. Like what what gives? 
And they made fun of they made fun of the disabled guy in the front row, in his wheelchair. That was terrible. There's Sal Freelich, 29 out of 75. It's a cool looking parallel that black border there for Robert Throne and the Brew Crew. Rex was like, I was there, and it was just like everyone was like, ooh. That was uh, very cringy. Oh yeah, that's exactly why he went off. He was being heckled. But I don't know. If you're if you're a professional stand-up, probably been heckled a lot. Probably better ways to handle that. And there's Brooks Goswin, speckled. But yeah, I mean, he didn't say it out of the blue. He was definitely being heckled, but this is a very, very poor way of handling it. We got Brady House, Aqua Lava to 199 for Washington, Chris. Uh, parent with the Nats. Titus is one of those controversial comics. Well, can't be that controversial. I, I haven't, I haven't heard of him until now. But maybe it's time. Maybe he wants to be controversial. Maybe he's like, I gotta get on the map. Fort Wayne is where I'm gonna do it. You have not seen a single Braves auto in like 12 cases of this? Well, we've only done, this is only our fifth case. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm assuming you're watching the other guys too. Uh, are there Braves on the checklist? Oh, maybe we're maybe we're due. You've only seen three comedians before: Bill Cosby, George Carlin, Adam Sandler slash Rob Schneider. Well, that's four. Unless you're just rolling Adam Sandler and Rob Schneider as one person. Yeah, I don't think I, I'm not a go see a comedy show guy. That, that is not that is not my thing. I don't think I've ever seen a a stand up performance. No, I have seen. I saw I saw Carrot Top. It was a college event. I saw Carrot Top at a college event. And it was like an on-campus event and it was like free or something like that. It was, I mean, it had to be before drinking age, otherwise I wouldn't have gone. Um, it was pretty funny, actually. There you go. There's a brainer Bonacci. Speckle to 9 out of 99 on that one. Kind of hard to see the number. They're hiding right there behind all the speckles, EA. And then our autograph is for the STL, Ryan Holgate.
You like Carrot Top? Yeah, I mean, I'm ambivalent about Carrot Top. I really don't. I would never go pay to see him or go out of my way to see him. There's Carson Williams, 21 out of 99, green paper for the Rays. But I suppose if I just ran into Caratop and he was doing a bit, I'd be like, all right, there he is. Starting to run out of steam a little bit here. And we got a green autograph. We have Carson Williams, two out of 99. That is for Anthony and the Tampa Bay Rays. <laughs> How could I not love carrot? I mean, just silly props. I don't know. I mean, it's just. <laughs> It's not for me. But I, I remember being like, oh, that show's okay. It's not too bad. It's Joe Mack to four ninety I don't think I've ever seen Impractical Jokers, but I, I absolutely hated Whose Line Is It Anyway. I remember an, an old, uh, an old like college roommate maybe of mine would like watch that religiously and he would sit there cackling as if it was the funniest thing in the world. And it's just like, yeah, that's basically watching like above average like high school improv classes <laughs> and I was like no thanks you know it was the same like improv basic improv exercises that you would do all the time and I'd be like nope that's pretty lame this is Robert Gasser to 250 purple paper for the Padres it's Carter Jensen Do I think Bradley Beal would be a good addition for the Lakers? Sure. I don't know how they'd ever make the money work, though. It would be almost impossible. Cody Kennedy with the Royals. Yes, there you go, Rex. Now we're on the we You can kind of see where where my humor is. Kids in the Hall is fantastic. Although I haven't I haven't I honestly haven't seen that show in a while. I don't know if it still holds up today. But I enjoyed Kids in the Hall. I remember enjoying I remember and I haven't seen Mr. Show in a while, but Mr. Show is another one that that was pretty good with uh, Bob and da David Cross, I think, who was eventually in Arrested Development. A show that I really like, Arrested Development, is another good one. All right, last box. Got to gotta take a quick breather after this, but almost there. Let's do the last box. We'll give away some money. We'll do an autograph recap. 
print out some labels, blah, 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 and go from there. Real time is all about impractical jokers. An actual real time competition that, that makes you do and say things to strange or you lose in public places. Yeah, I'm not about, not into that. I know a lot of people like it. I know it does well, but not into it. I don't like prank shows. I don't like the, impra the impractical jokers competition. Like that kind of stuff doesn't really do it for me. Adrian Del Castillo to 150 paper for the Diamondbacks. Got a Max Meyer to 150. I think he was a high round draft pick, right? Third overall. Marlins may have a sneaky good starting rotation. Marty and the Marlins. There's Eric Sarantola, Blue Wave. Bowman first autograph, 90 out of 150 for the Royals' Cody Kennedy with Kansas City. Next stack. Oh, there's the autograph, Robert Gasser. What does he throw? Gas. That's what he throws. Ben Smith with the Padres. It's the uh, second round pick. Jumping Jack Flash. It's a gas, gas, gas. There's another Colton Kowser Oriole for Chad, another Henry Davis for Mark and the Pirates. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice if the Lakers could play like this all the time. They've been hanging tough in spite of a lot of uh, injuries and whatnot. Sorry about that. There's Ben uh, Kasparius. 143 out of 199. Aqua Lava autograph for Martin and the Dodgers. Won that spot in the filler. 
fifth round pick. That was your third and final autograph. Now let's see if we could find some low numbered parallels perhaps before we close down this break. We got Maximo Acosta, 20 out of 4.99 for the Rangers. That's going to go to Karen P. We got Ronnie Maurizio, Aqua Lava to 199 for the Mets. I think that's also Karen. Yes, also for Karen. And that, my friends, is that. All right, pretty solid break here. Give me a minute to. Uh, We'll keep the video running. And we're going to give away some money. After we give away some money, then we are going to do a quick little recap. So let's flip back to this screen right over here. And let's gather everybody's names and alphabetize them by your first name. Now, if you bought at least two teams and basically buy an even number of teams, you got a chance at break credit. Top 500 bucks each. Anthony bought two. That's an entry. Chad bought two. That's an entry. Daniel bought two. That's an entry. EA bought four. That's two entries. Jeremy bought two. That's an entry. Karen bought two, that's an entry. Mark got four, that's two entries. Uh, Marty ended up with three for the purpose of the promo two count, that's still an entry. And Robert and Ryan did not get two. That's actually not bad odds. Let me just double check this again really quick. Anthony. Chad. Daniel, Becker, EA, Jeremy, Karen, Mark B, Marty. All right. There's only 10 spots here. So top five after 10, half of this list will get 100 bucks each after two and a one, three times. One. Good luck. Two. And three easy times. After three... We've got uh, Marty, Mark, Mark, EA, and Daniel Becker. Congrats to the top five. Thanks for getting in. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Check your emails for those. Uh, I almost stopped the video before going through the recap. I am Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, and I'll see you in the next video for the next break. And then... More Bowman Draft in the store, so check it out on jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.